CMJ is back in New York this week, CMJ Music Marathon. And we are here at the living room in Brooklyn to talk to Mike Piera from Analog Man Guitar Effects Pedals about his philosophy, some of his new designs, and some of his best-selling pedals. This is Guitar Malade. Analog Man is uh, bas basically going for the vintage sounds of the classic rock, blues, and prog rock that I really like. We're really trying to get those kind of sounds that I, I grew up with and people have been constantly going back to and revisiting. <laughs> would have to be the king of tone. Um, pretty much we can sell as many as, as, we, can, as we can make, um, but you know we don't want to overextend ourselves. I don't like mass production. Oh boy, favorite recording. Using my pedals, I think some of the some of the early Gary Clark Jr. stuff um, sounded fantastic with his Epiphone Casino through the uh, through the Astrotone King of Tone. Um, we used one of our prototype distortions, and uh, some of those live recordings were fantastic. Gary Clark Jr. isn't the only notable guitarist to employ the ironically bespectacled, sunface emblazoned pedals. From Kenny Wayne Shepherd to The Edge, many have played Analog Man over the years. So I stopped by his headquarters just outside New York City to play through some of his new and classic designs. We're the company that really knows the vintage pedals because we started as a vintage pedal dealer. We've always studied these old pedals ever since the first chorus to try to learn what makes them tick so we could make our pedals sound as good as possible. Here we got some Klan Centaurs, an original 30-year-old Roger Mayer Octavia. The original Octavia that Roger Mayer built was different from any of the ones that he put in production. The ones he made for Jimi Hendrix were, uh, were quite a bit different. These are the scratch and dents anyway. They're even more scratched and dented. Got a pretty decent selection of the MXRs from the original small box with the script logo up to the block logo just before they went out of business. It's our paint booth, it's called a hallway. <laughs> All the capacitors we use are pretty much new old stock, various chips. We definitely have the funkiest demo guitars that you'll see around. This is a really cool K, great for slide guitar or blues. Still trying to figure out how to do it efficiently after 20 years. <laughs> Tell me about this um, analog delay with the tap tempo. That's our kind of our flagship product now. The analog delay alone has got more features than most because it's got two actual settings of both delay time, feedback, and effects level, whereas most analog delays will only have two different delay times. And we've got the modulation on there too. Yeah, sounds great with this compressor for the really? cleans. It really brings it out. It makes your attacks nice and strong, and it yeah, really. makes the sustain nice and strong, too. Beautiful. That sounds Beautiful. great. There's no reverb, it's just the delay. Yeah, oh my God, it's just reverb. the delay. We've done some samples where people swear that there's reverb on it, but it's just the delay because it's just so ethereal sounding. <laughs> So I had a question for you because you mentioned something that was really interesting at CMJ. Mixing and where to mix pedals that had buffers on them. I always thought as like, you know, the, this guitar nerd that you wanted, you know, these analog pedals, everything point to point and nothing digital. Right. What is the benefit of having a buffer in your pedal? Yeah, okay, you do, you really should have, have at least one buffer, especially if you've got this many pedals. The reason you want to have a buffer is it just kind of keeps your guitar signal strong. You don't want too many of these because every one of them is going to change your signal slightly and it's going to take a little bit of that organic feel away from your playing. You know, you don't want to have 10 boss pedals in a row because each one of them has a buffer and by the time you're through there, turn them all off, you're just not going to feel happy with your tone probably. So by having one buffer, or even maybe three in some pedal boards, you preserve your tone, but you don't change it too much by having too many buffers. And secret analog man ingredients. Hot sauce. Shh. <laughs> what is like the order you do in terms of delay and other fuzz tones? Do you do 
fuzz into delay. Yeah, I always want to pretty much have the delay last. Right. The only thing you might want to have after delay might be a reverb pedal. Okay. Or a booster or a um, volume pedal would be good after delay, but everything else okay. should be before it. At the beginning of the order, you usually want to start with your compressor because your compressor usually wants to see the guitar directly. Other pedals before the compressor will change your guitar sound and get rid of the dynamics so the compressor won't do its thing quite as well. Although other people like Trey love to have tube screamers in front of their compressor, which makes it a higher amount of compression. It's more of an effect. The fuzzes I'll put kind of before the overdrives and after the compressor. And we've got a couple of sun faces, which are basically our version of the Dallas Arbiter fuzz faces. This one is one I really like that not too many people know about. It's high gain germanium. Germanium is nice because it's very warm and smooth. Silicon is a little uh, brighter and harder. The cool thing about it is they're high gain, so you can get a lot of fuzz. Germaniums are normally not, but these are high gain. It does have a power jack, but you have to be careful because germanium transistors are positive ground. If you share this power with another pedal, you'll blow out your power supply. People tend to like germaniums because they clean up when you back your guitar down, and then you can roll it up and start getting the fuzz. Silicon is going to be brighter, but it doesn't really clean up quite the same. Geranium is definitely a little warmer and cleaner. Tell me, I mean, you're the expert, you know if this is true or not, that the geranium kind of responds to heat more? Like very, really very day. much. What we do is we put these sun dials on here, which is actually a bias control. So when it gets warmer, the uh, bias will, will go up, and you can turn the sundial down to smooth it out a little bit. But most germaniums, if it gets too hot, like above 80, 85, they're just not really going to sound good. They lose, they lose that nice high end, just like turning your tone knob down. But the silicon doesn't have that issue, so the silicon can be used at any temperature, and it'll always pretty much sound the same. No lights on this? Without a power jack, we, we don't put an LED, because the LED will use something like 20 to 30 times more power than really? the pedal itself. Yeah. I have one of the peppermint fuzzes on my board and I have the on-off pot. You hear it click and that disconnects the battery. So that's a nice feature to have so you can leave it connected in your pedal board all the time. But sometimes I'll forget and I'll leave it on for weeks. Right. And I'll come back and it still works fine after weeks. <laughs> I should have known better than to ask an electronics guru about the inner workings of his pedal. In my experience, such questions are not always answered in a manner that will satisfy anyone other than those who have reached a similar level of tech nerd nirvana, given the usual in-depth and arcane responses. One of Eric Johnson's favorite red ones, I believe, has the BC-183s in it. Ever since I started selling the NKTs, which was I don't know, 15 years ago, everyone else has bought up the remaining stock in the world. All the ones I've found in the last five years or so have been fakes or they've been picked over and they sounded really bad. So I'm kind of giving up on our NKTs, which is unfortunate because we're so, you know, we're so kind of famous for those, but I don't want to be selling anybody some fake transistors that just don't sound as good. And there you have it. An uncompromising connoisseur of tone based out of a small shop in Connecticut, churning out some of the best boutique pedals and most popular mods a guitar nerd could ask for. From the lush sounding analog delay with digital tap tempo to the myriad fuzz pedals built to order, analog man pedals are sure to please even the most discerning guitar god. 